This is Anona's Worship, Grow, Serve, Live podcast for June 9th, 2024, Fruit of the Spirit, Part 2, Joy in the Morning, with Dr. Jack Stevenson. This is one of our sermon series episodes produced by Anona United Methodist Church. For more information and video versions, visit anona.com. And now, for another great message. We have a series going on that encapsulates one of those scriptures that is at the heart of the Christian message, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and my worst one. Before I get into the particular scripture and sermon for today, let me talk about all nine of these as a bunch. The Christian life is not so much affected by environment and circumstance as it affects the circumstance and environment in which you find yourself. What does that mean? We're less a mirror that reflects what's outside of us and more a light bulb that pours out what is inside of us. And so the fruits of the Spirit talk about what the Holy Spirit is growing within you. And so for all nine of these, and for for Jesus' teachings in general, it's more about how you are on the inside than how the world is outside of you. And so... As we look at love and joy and peace and patience, we're looking at things that reside and grow within your spirit. Now, spirit is a hard thing to define. We've got our mind, which is our cognitive thinking part. We've got our heart, which is our emotional part. And we've got our spirit, which enlivens It is, think of the breath of life that enlivens you. It's what gives it all life. And so the source of your very life is this breath of God, this pneuma, this chruah, this spirit that enlivens you. That spirit is described in nine ways. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It is that spirit that affects your condition more than the circumstance of your condition. Now, having said that about all nine fruits of the spirit, let's read some scripture about this particular fruit of the spirit, joy. And so we go to scripture. Now, His anger is one of the ways that um, the Old Testament describes hard times, bad times, God's anger. For his anger, or hard times, is but a moment, but his favor, which is how the Old Testament talks about good times, God's favor, is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This encapsulates the difference between constant and occasional. Weeping and happiness are occasional. They are things that happen because of the occasion. But the joy within your heart is permanent. Psychologists call this hedonic adaptation, and that's not that useful for you to remember, But remember it like this graph. This is a level, okay? Up here is joy, down here is sorrow. This level you return to after an event. And so you have a joyous event. You have the birth of a grandchild. You come up, and then you go home, and you gotta do the dishes. And so the moment lifts you up, And then you return to this baseline, this hedonic adaptation, this way you are, this, 
constant normalcy. You have deep sorrow. You lose a loved one. You're in pain and you miss them. But you come back up to do the dishes. And this constant level is what joy is. Different, as Sandy said, different from happiness, which is about an occasion. Joy is about your condition. And it's what you return to, it's your baseline. And so things can make you happy or sad. But your joy rises or falls according to the health of your spirit. And so, the more your health is, the more rises this constant within you, this pervasive way you are. And you can get a little above it with a happy occasion. You can get a little below it with a sad occasion. But what psychologists have found is you return to this baseline that only grows through your spiritual health. Sorrow lasts for the night, joy comes in the morning, means that sorrow spends a moment with you, but you return to your level of joy that is yours. So I don't want to talk about the occasions that make you happy or sad, because as long as the world is making you happy or sad, you are a victim because you are a victim to the events that are occurring rather than a constant strength. The willow tree planted by the water, as the scripture describes it, the wind blows it and it looks weak because it billows as it willows. But it withstands the strongest storms because it's rooted in the river. You have a river of life flowing out of you. And it is that river of life that is your constant that will hold you compared to the events that are causing happiness or sadness. In fact, the more you get your head around, the world doesn't cause you to be a certain way. Another person doesn't cause you to be a certain way the more you can rest in this beautiful place that says, as Popeye says, I am's what I am's. Now, those who knew who Popeye was, you are all on Medicare with me, (laughs) every one of us, because they don't do Popeye anymore. And you do realize that Popeye was employed by the spinach industry. But I digress. So I want to talk to you for a minute about this condition our condition is in is made up of both joy and sorrow. Now, let's talk about depression for a minute. Depression isn't sadness. It's one of the great misnomers about what depression is. Depression is a lack of what they call amplitude a lack of being happy and being sad. It's really nothing. It's no movement. Stuff doesn't cause you to be happy, doesn't cause you to be sad. You are not experiencing. You are flatlining. The more you let sorrow in, this is, this is a mystery of faith, the more you let sorrow in and truly feel it from your safe place of joy, the more it carves the amplitude, the more you can feel the joy. If you fear the loss, you cannot commit to the love because it's only that which we love deeply that hurts us in its loss. There's a Christian poet Lebanese, named Khalil Gibran. I'm going to try this without my glasses, just because I'm in public. 
A woman said to the prophet, speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. They are the same thing. They're this amplitude, this up and downness of us. And the self-same well from which your laughter rises is filled with your tears. Listen to that. This ability to feel, not the numbness, the ability to feel is a wellspring of joy and a bowl full of tears. It's both. How else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the fire? And is not the lute which plays the soothing music that which was cut by the carver's knife? What Christ invites you into is a life of abundance, that we have life and that abundantly. Feel the joy from your safe place. Let the happiness make you happy. Embrace the sadness of that which you've lost from your safe place of I'm okay. I'm filled with the fruits of the Spirit. The Spirit enlivens my life. And from this place, I can feel happiness and sadness. Neither of them change me, but both of them have pleasure. Why does sorrow have pleasure? Listen to the beauty of Scripture and listen to Khalil Gibran and John Wesley say, it's only that which we have deeply loved that hurts us in its loss. If we didn't really like it, we're not... There was a thing called jalapeno ice cream for a while, Ben and Jerry's. I tried it back when we all went into places like Ben and Jerry's. I don't miss it. They stopped doing it. I don't care. You know why I don't care? I didn't really like it. And so I don't miss it when it's gone. Now, salted caramel. If Ben and Jerry stopped that, it would affect me. Why? Because I like it. Do you hear how they're the same thing? Do you hear how your sorrow And your joy are one thing called amplitude. Your highs and your lows surround this you that is built upon the fruits of the Spirit. So the stronger this is, the more you can let this happen. Let it happen. When you run from the sorrow, you run from the joy. I know that's hard to hear, and I know, I know I'm touching real close to a lot of bones that are just really, really painful right now. But the Bible invites you into an abundant life where you feel, where you feel. Don't fear the feel. That's at the heart of alcoholism. It's at the heart of depression. It's at the heart of withdrawing from the world. It's at the heart of isolationism. What are we doing? We're fearing that we might get hurt. I took my granddaughter to a middle school dance. What you saw was a bunch of very afraid kids standing like this. Joy is in front of them. The joy that high school will unveil to the deep fear of parents. But can they feel the joy? No, 
because they're frozen by the fear of rejection. You remember middle school, don't you? They didn't call it middle school when I was there. We had elementary and we had high school. We had this netherland between. It was this weird time of puberty. They should have just put us in a box and (laughs) tucked us away for two or three years. But what are those kids afraid of? And how does it stop them from that step forward into life? Life. Now, when you have this, when you have this, you can give yourself to this life. It's another name for God. This life force that flows inside of you, this river of life. Give yourself to it completely. Give yourself to God, to life, to living. And when you give yourself completely, you can say, God, use me. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. And it doesn't matter the circumstance. I'm going to read a little bit of John Wesley, again, without my glasses, just because I'm showing off. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dad, damn it. I need a 14-year-old to navigate my phone. I am no longer my own. This is a prayer to God. But thine. Life, take me. Spirit of life within me, use me. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing or put me to suffering. I am not afraid of any of it. Any of it. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. It doesn't affect me. Can you you hear this? This abundant life. Let me have all things. This is hard. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. So be it. Are you like a middle schooler? paralyzed by fear of the pain? Are you like the drug addict, seeking constant, constant, constant happiness? Afraid of the dip, afraid of the down, afraid of the hangover, afraid of the fall. I urge you to this biblical joy that is how you are. I was a missionary with the Haitian boat lift back when I was very young, very naive, and very stupid. Because I spoke French, they put me with the Haitian people, thinking I would understand them. Well, first off, Haitian people don't speak French. They speak a Creole, a Patois. And I was with Michel Constant, And I was preaching and he was translating. And I was preaching a little bit and he was talking for like five minutes. And after it was over, I said, Michelle, how come I said a sentence and you said a paragraph? He said, well, they needed the gospel and you weren't quite there. (laughs) But in Creole, you don't say, as the French would say, Como allez-vous, or como vas-tu, which means, how are you? You say, como es, which means, how you is. 
And I would ask you this biblical, powerful, spiritual question. Not what is happening that's making you happy. Not what is happening that makes you sad. But how you is. How is your is? Because if this joy is permanent, indelible, and powerful as the scripture says, the joy and the sorrow can both be felt without fear. I want to pray for you. Lord, as we sing our closing hymn, as we feel this worship service, help us to invite your Holy Spirit of joy, love and peace and patience to flow into our isness so we don't run after the joy or flee from the sorrow, but embrace it all as abundant life. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Mitch and I share what I'm gonna preach about and then he searches through music and stuff. So glad you picked that song. One of my favorite lines, let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. Refuse to sing, get depressed, get isolated. Run around after happiness frantically. Run scared of sorrow and you will not be singing. You will not be marching to Zion. You'll be running around tired, empty. Embrace the Holy Spirit that lives within you and it will give you an abundant life, but that will be scary because in an abundant life, you feel. If you found this message meaningful, share it with others. To find more great episodes and stay up to date, subscribe to Know United Methodist Church's podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere you find your favorite podcast shows. In addition, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and find the community on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Anona Church. You can join us on our campus in Largo, Florida and discover new ways to reach out to the Pinellas County community. Be a part of the Anona Church family as we worship, grow, serve, and live.